Senator Mary Kiffmeyer, thanks for joining us today. Glad to be with you, Julie. So, Senator, your political resume is very lengthy. Former Secretary of State, you were a longtime member in the House. Why the move to the Senate? Well, actually, it was interesting. Uh, when I ran for the House the very first time, uh, Betsy Worgen had resigned uh, to take a, an appointment with the PUC, and folks said, oh, you should be in the Senate. You'd just be so good in the Senate, and, you know, that sort of a thing. And I said, well, I'm here to serve. I really don't care. Uh, legislature, whether it's this side of the hall or that side of the hall, it wasn't a big thing to me. And, and, and the opportunity, though, with redistricting was a little different this time. It put me in a brand new Senate district that I was the only incumbent. And I really felt that as a senator, I could represent both halves of the district. So we'd have somebody with experience, <clears throat> and then we'd have kind of like the fresh voices in the House. So we have that kind of partnership throughout the whole Senate district. Plus, remembering what they had said, I thought, I'll do the Senate this time. Now was the time. You spoke a little bit about experience. As you move into the Senate, what do you consider some of your legislative priorities, just coming out of the chute? Well, the election subcommittee, of course, uh, it's always just been a very special interest. I think for my years of being an election judge for 11 years, that's actually that on the boots, on the ground, in the process gave me my very first window into the importance and the need and the value, and I've retained that all along. I'll also be serving on capital investment. Budget is really important. I think roads, bridges, transportation, uh, making sure uh, I come from a growing district that needs buildings as well as an increase of students. So we have different needs. And so working uh, for my district on education funding and making sure they get a, a good fair shot in the mix of the expenditures and transportation. And then I think pro-job growth policies. We, we are a growing district. so. Um, those are the kind of three areas that my district needs most. Now, you personally, <clears throat> excuse me, in the past have advocated for reforming the election system. You spoke a little bit about that. You were the House author for the voter photo ID legislation that the governor eventually, um, well, that made it onto the ballot, obviously. Now, Governor Dayton recently signaled to the Democratic leaders that any campaign reform legislation must have bipartisan support. He's stated that in the past as well. He says that campaign finance reform might be the sleeper issue for 2013. Would you agree with that? Well, campaign finance reform is not on my top priority of my agenda. I, I don't see that there's a whole lot wrong with uh, campaign finance laws that we have right now, except for the fact that some of the um, contribution limits or spending limits have not kept pace uh, it's been a long, long time, and so there's some lag there, but it wouldn't be my first issue that I would consider hugely important. Do you foresee any areas within our election reform potential legislation that could get some bipartisan support? Well, I'm a little bit caught between what the governor said about the photo ID constitutional amendment. It was too expensive, to this or to that or whatever, and so what are we going to do then, governor? If that's what you've said, um, then what are the things that you think, um, because he has the veto pen, so it's going to be very important as to this is what you've said, and you've also said send photo ID back to the legislature and fix it, considering that. So I'm, I'm a little bit, uh, they've kind of put themselves in a little bit of a box here as far as going forward. Uh, but I've been a supporter before of some of the administrative efficiencies and some of those kinds of things. You know, is there room for some of that? Um, that's a possibility. It's, it's just a matter of, I think my big thing is I've, I haven't changed in regards to what I believe in the integrity in addition to the access of the system. But I think the governor's put himself in a little bit of a box now uh, because of the statements they and the Democrats have made. You were on Capitol Report last year and talked a little bit about your, um, about electronic poll books, and that was an area where you and current Secretary of State Mark Ritchie actually agree that perhaps that could be mm -hmm. an avenue in the future. So is that something <laughs> you foresee this particular session? Well, I haven't changed. I always have. But the problem is that the governor has said that's too expensive. That's this and it's that and, and photo ID was too much money. So that's what I mean. They kind of put themselves in a box. But I haven't changed in regards to that. I have a little different philosophy about how um, 
I don't believe that election judges should be put in the position of taking photos in the polling place. I think it's a constitutional privacy issue. And so for me, access and integrity in balance with each other in the election system and any policy you do, as Representative Winkler said to me one time, well, you know, uh, Mary, um, you Republicans believe in integrity and we believe in access. I said, well, just a not quite all the way there. I said, we believe in integrity with access, those two together. But the other part of it is the privacy of the voting process. Uh, individual voters out there are hugely sensitive to the privacy of their vote, uh, the privacy of the voting. And, and one of the most frequent phone calls on any election day when I was Secretary of State would be the phone calls that came flooding in about an election judge who stood too close to them when they put their ballot in the ballot box. And they would call in, take the time to call in and say, and so we always had to on our training, be sure you stand a good respectful distance away and wait for them to ask for help. Okay, let's move away from the issues and I wanna just kinda of get your impression of, mm -hmm. you've been a member of the majority, you've been a member of the minority party. What would your advice be to members of, the, of your caucus now? Be patient, uh, it's not permanent. Um, in that I've seen majorities come and go and the different changes that go along. And you can be successful in the minority. Um, I uh, did a pension amendment that was uh, a huge thing supported by all the entities. I worked at the city of Minneapolis. I did a 20 year spreadsheet showing them the value of putting more money up front to compound growth to their gain. A million more for 20 years saved them 150 million at the end. Those kinds of things, my name is not on any amendment and I was in the minority and it saved the taxpayers about 5.2 billion over the next five years in pension costs. My name is not on that amendment. I handed it over to a majority party member who introduced it, it was successfully passed and signed by Governor Pawlenty. So I, I think there are different, but there are different ways in how you do things. Uh, but I'm more, uh, I care more about getting the work done than having my name on it because I'm here now to serve the people and what I believe is in their best interest and in representing my district and I'll do that whichever so, way. And although you're a, you know, you're really a newcomer to the Senate, you're a veteran of the legislative process, so would you consider yourself a bit of a mentor to other new members? I've always done that even in the House when I first came in because my husband was a state representative before and actually we've both represented the same area as a state representative um, during our time frame. The good news, he didn't, he didn't die for me to get there like sometimes it happens, I always think that's. So uh, living representatives, I think that um, no matter your situation as you go there, you can find ways to be successful and I've always looked for ways that I can be helpful to any other members. I have uh, young girls that I, I shadow, I bring a lot of, uh, I like to work with interns and, and uh, fellow members as well. Senator, my last question for you is, what are your expectations as session begins? Well, it's going to be a very, I think the unusualness of this situation is majority minority is one thing, but uh, being here during a time where you have the opposite party having all three, uh, all three uh, control of all three, that's a little different one as far as not having experience before with, with getting the flow and all that. But I think there is a desire on their part to have it be bipartisan and that's, that's something that I will seek to work with them as well. And the art of negotiation will have a new test in this process. Senator Mary Kiffmeyer, thank you very much with those words. We appreciate your time. Thank you for being here and having me.